Welcome to the pre-recording of lecture 21 of MCS 481, an introduction to computational geometry. So at this point in the course, we have arrived at Voronoi diagrams. Um, to make it self-contained, I will very briefly explain uh, what is a Voronoi diagram, what is its complexity, and how can we characterize the vertices and its edges. Uh, last time we saw that uh, SciPy is extremely good at very quickly generating uh, examples. Uh, today I will uh, explain how to use Seagull, uh, the computational geometry algorithms library, and through its Python interface. So that's the introduction. Uh, we will introduce an algorithm that is a sweep line algorithm that can construct a Voronoi diagram in n log n time. So it's an optimal algorithm similar to sorting. So you can't do any better. So you can see a Voronoi diagram similar like we introduced a convex hull algorithm as sorting points in the plane. Okay, so let's dive in. Uh, what is uh, a Voronoi diagram again? So, the post office problem uh, asks to find the closest post office for each point in a plane. So here you see the Voronoi diagram of three sites. Uh, the sites are shown in black. And every point in a region with the same color is closest to that black site in that region. So if these three black dots represent post offices, then every person living in that green area goes to that dot, black dot that is in that green area. So uh, the white lines are the edges. Uh, the one center point here is a vertex. So if you live on that vertex, you are equally close to any of these three points. So we have shown that in the previous lecture, that if you have n sides, so at least three, like in the example, then the number of vertices can be at most to n minus five, and the number of edges is also at most linear in the number of sites. So at the very beginning, we saw that uh, a very straightforward algorithm is by constructing all the bisectors and then shortening the bisectors. So a bisector splits uh, the plane in two equal halves. Um, so that's an algorithm that is very good if you have to construct Voronoi diagrams by hand for a small amount of sites. So the main result uh, of the complexity is that uh, there is the possibility of an n log n algorithm. So the fact that the algorithm that we cover today is an n log n algorithm, we will prove this in the next lecture. Today we will introduce um, the algorithm. So there's one more uh, result that we need from last time. So here is uh, one cell shown of a Voronoi diagram. So what is shaded in green is the Voronoi diagram for the site at the point P1. So there are four other points. So you can see that there are four corners and four edges. So the corners of a Voronoi cell, also called the vertices of a Voronoi cell, they are at the center of a circle, a circle through three sides. And this is the largest empty circle that you can draw that is free of sides. So in some sense, this could also, this, this is an important characterization, but thinking of applications, instead of seeing these sites as sites that you would like to visit, uh, you could also see these sites as sites that you would like to avoid. 
So if you are at the vertex, uh, you also in some sense at a point uh, that is optimal in the sense that in this disk defined by the circle, there is no other side. For, so this characterizes the vertices. Uh, the edges are similarly characterized by circles. So you can think about now two sides. You have the bisector. So the edge is a line segment here, which is a portion of the bisector. And on this bisector is the center of the circle that passes through the sides. So the theorem, which we went through last time in the previous lecture, uh, formalizes uh, these observations. Um, so as we have introduced them with a picture, but these can be made formally via the definition of this largest empty circle centered at this point Q here. Q is a vertex if there are three points, three or more points involved. Uh, it's an edge, it lies on an edge if uh, there are only two points that are involved. Okay, so we will use uh, this classification for uh, the uh, this characterization of a vertex of a Voronoi diagram via this uh, circle. So this is important. So the proof is spelling out the geometric observation, but we will use this construction. Okay, um, so before we go into the mathematics, let's compute something. Uh, so I introduced last time the uh, SciPy uh, construction for quickly uh, generating as many Voronoi diagrams as you like. Um, we are also using the uh, Seagull library. Um, so here I took the documentation of the Python bindings and I kind I modified it slightly. So we have a simple set of sites, um, six points in the plane. Uh, the data that Seagull will compute uh, will be stored in a half edge structure. Um, so we introduced the half edges earlier in the lecture, but they appear again here. Um, if you want to get the information out of the computed Voronoi diagram, you have to work with queries. Uh, so you use the query point to each site to get the description of the face. So I will go to the post to Jupyter Notebook. The first exercise with this lecture is to use uh, matplotlib, which is very convenient in, uh, for Python users and Python programmers. So write a simple code to actually plot all the vertices and all the edges. Okay, uh, so here it is. Uh, so this is the Jupyter Notebook. Um, so the configuration of points is here. Uh, defined and also plotted. Um, so uh, plotting with matplotlib, uh, you have to know the scatter command, um, separating the x and the y coordinates from the list of points. So you see uh, we have one square, um, the first four points define a square, and then we have two extra points. If you remember the, uh, the definition of uh, a Voronoi diagram, then you will uh, immediately be able to draw the vertices. So you can here already draw in some sense. Uh, what you can do is that you can draw a diamond shape, uh, shaped uh, Voronoi cell for the center point. Um, so um, the first exercise asks you to essentially write the matplot code for this. But uh, the coordinates are simple enough of the points uh, that we can uh, quickly compute uh, this Voronoi diagram ourselves. Okay, so here is the code, uh, what you need to know when you use Seagull. 
So I took the coordinates of the points and I uh, applied the primitive, so the kernel uh, point underscore two to it. So this is to make it in the data structure suitable for the input to the Voronoi underscore diagram underscore two. Um, and that's essentially it. Uh, so computing a Voronoi diagram is feeding the input um, the x and the y coordinates in these uh, point underscore two uh, data structure. So we will also use the uh, Voronoi underscore diagram underscore two underscore half edge underscore handle uh, to go through the queries. So if we are querying the Voronoi diagram, um, so remember the post office problem, we want to know uh, what is the post office closest to the current location. So we will locate and there are three possible cases. Uh, so you can be on a vertex, you can be on an edge or you can be in a face. And the last case actually should not happen. So I wrote a very simple, well, I took the code that was posted um, as the uh, in the list of examples for the swig bindings and I slightly modified it. Uh, in particular, I feel always uh, documentation strings are important. So here you can see for the first side, what do we expect? Well, the query point is in a face. Um, so the Voronoi diagram partitions or subdivides the plane into faces. So faces are the convex regions. Why again are they convex? Well, remember the bisectors define half planes and the intersection of convex regions, these half planes is again convex. Okay, then another auxiliary uh, routine prints uh, the um, endpoints of the edges. Uh, so here we will print the endpoints, the vertices in counterclockwise order. So typically we will only print the target point of every edge. So this is done here in this print vertices. So we will print each endpoint. So we start at uh, one edge and once the uh, next edge is actually if we are equal then we can break out so we can cycle around uh, this convex region. So in some sense this looks complicated but it is not if you remember the convex hull algorithms. Uh, so every Voronoi cell is convex and uh, you, a convex hull is uh, described by uh, an ordering of the vertex points uh, here in counterclockwise order. So let's do this for the first query point. Um, so we have 50-50, so that's the vertex point that is computed and then we have another vertex point and that's a point at infinity. What this actually means that if you look at uh, the original sites, um, so this is a picture that you have to complete. So the point 5050 is a vertex point that is computed here. Uh, you see that it is at the same distance of four points. Uh, it's the center of the square. And we will have two edges. Uh, so actually the edges will be half lines. So you have everything that is on the line at uh, the first coordinate 50 and goes all the way to infinity going to the bottom and then we go to the left uh, at height y equals 50. So that is our first Voronoi cell. Then uh, I'm going to take the second uh, point or actually the third point which is 100 100 and then we're going to find the vertices on this uh, diamond uh, shape Voronoi cell. So that's the uh, last construction that is done here. So also the vertex 5050 uh, is on that face, uh, so it's actually the last uh, vertex that is printed. But here you see that due to the symmetric location 
of uh, the point set and also the nice coordinates, it allows us to verify the correctness of this construction. Okay, it's a good exercise. Uh, so at this point, um, so this lecture is self-contained. So even if you have not uh, looked at everything else that we have covered so far, then you should be able, if you are a programmer and what familiar with uh, Matplotlib and Python, you should be able to do this first exercise. Okay, I'm 15 minutes into this lecture. Um, and we have uh, our first exercise. Okay, how does Seagal compute this Voronoi diagram? Or how should you compute it? Well, before we get to the sweep line algorithm, uh, we have to define what is uh, the beach line. Um, so we have in a sweep line algorithm, we sort the points according to height. So we sorting can be done in n log n time. So if you have n sites, we can do this in n log n. So we will sort the point on their highest y coordinate and put this into somehow a priority queue. Um, then as the sweep line moves, so the sweep line is actually an imaginary line. It's represented by one number, which is the height of the sweep line. Then we imagine the parabola. So parabola is defined by a focus. The focus is here a site. So the sites become the foci uh, of the parabolas. So what is drawn here in red, uh, the beta uh, from the beach, uh, we have all the points that are at the same distance from the site pi here and uh, the sweep line. So what is important here is that this parabola separates the points. Uh, so the, the, the parabola again, what is a parabola? It's the set of all points at the same distance. So it separates actually the points that are closest to the sweep line and the points that are closest to the sites. So what this means is that all points above this parabola lie closer to the site than to the sweep line. So if we are constructing our Voronoi diagram incrementally from top to bottom, then everything that we have all above this parabola will not change anymore. So that's an important property, an important invariant. Okay, so here is now the notion of the beach line. If we have a num for each site, we define the parabola uh, with the sweep line as a directrix. So these are parabolas that are, as you can see, they have, uh, they're all positive, um, they're concave up, so they're all happy. Um, we are going to the beach, we think about the beach, we are happy. So we have this sequence of parabolas, and that sequence that is defining the beach line. So the beach line is here drawn in red. It's the intersection of the parabolas, or actually, I'm sorry, it's not the intersection. Some of the points on the beach line are intersections, but it consists of those parabolas uh, those points on the parabolas that are closest to the sweep line. So that is the beach line. So what is drawn here in red. Okay, again, important invariant, everything of the Voronoi diagram above a parabola does not change as we move down. All right, here are important observations and also now our second exercise. So the second exercise is meant for slowing us down. Uh, but let me make the observations. Actually, the observations are uh, drawn in green. So we have the intersection points and uh, we can draw the bisectors. So um, an intersection point here. So this lies on this black parabola B1. 
So it's the closest, it's the points at the same distance of P1 and the sweep line. It lies on the parabola beta 2, so actually it is at the same distance of the sweep line and P2. So it is a point on our Voronoi diagram. So that's the property. So it belongs to the bisector between P1 and P2. So um, the beach line is X monotone. Every vertical line intersects the beach line in exactly one point. So if you imagine a vertical line anywhere, um, you can hit the beach line only once. And if you think about this, this is not so surprising. So the beach line consists of the points that are closest to the sweep line. So in that word closest, there is already the uniqueness. Um, you can to explain these observations, as I'm now trying to do, and you can write them down as a consequence of this recording here, but you can also reason by contradiction. What if there would be two points if you draw this vertical line and you intersect, you would intersect the beach line twice. So that would actually mean that you have one point that lies above the other, but all points on the beach line that has to be closest to the sweep line. So the point that lies above the other cannot be part of the uh, beach line. So therefore, you, the assumption that you would have two points is wrong. So that's the half of the exercise that are solved already, that is solved now. So if you have a breakpoint on the beach line, so here I have three. So these are the intersection of two adjacent uh, parabolic arc. They lie on the edges of the Voronoi diagram. And I try to explain this by actually spelling out what it means to be on a parabola. It means that you are at the same distance, but if you have a breakpoint, that means that actually there are two sides involved. So you are on the bisector. So in order to explain this, you have to explain what is the notion of a bisector. You can also uh, work by contradiction again. What if you would not be on an edge of the Voronoi diagram? And then you would have the properties of the breakpoint. And that would actually, just what I just explained, by the properties of the breakpoint, you are on the bisector. And therefore you are on an edge of a Voronoi diagram. Um, you're on edge of the Voronoi diagram because these are two adjacent ones. And you can see for the examples here, the third point is not involved. Or here, if you consider P1 and P3, P2 is not involved. So you can reason uh, with this picture here. Okay, so this is the beach line. Um, what are now the events? Um, well, there are two events. Uh, parabolic arcs, they can appear. And this happens when you have a new site. Uh, so here, the event happens when we are encountering the next the next highest uh, point uh, in our event queue which is here p4 so the appearance of p4 you can imagine a very infinitesimal uh, sweep line going down there you have this parabola appearing so the other event is that the parabolic arc may disappear and that's another event. So we have two types of events. The first simplest event is actually where the sweep line meets a new site. So, um, and that is called a site event. All right. Um, so the importance is that uh, it's only through a site event that a new arc uh, can appear. And this is important. Uh, so uh, in some sense, we're going to phrase the algorithm later. Sometimes we uh, formulate an algorithm and then we prove its correctness. 
actually we will first actually make all kinds of observations about the beach line and then since we have rigorously uh, understood uh, these properties uh, the algorithm will actually follow um, okay suppose that by contradiction if you would like to uh, prove this uh, statement is that um, we have an existing uh, parabola that would break through the beach line um, and that is at some point um, it can define through a middle arc or it um, in, the, in the middle of a new arc uh, perhaps I should try to draw this um, so what do we have I actually should start with we have an existing uh, parabola here and then we have a new parabola that breaks through so that is the first type um, the other type is that uh, the parabola may break through in two um, in in between two arcs uh, so let me also draw this let me change color again so we have two parabolas and then we have a new parabola that actually breaks through okay so uh, how will we handle the first case well here it is uh, we can compute the equation of the parabola and then uh, we have a new parabola coming in and we will compute these intersection points here let's do this so in some sense it's a computational proof uh, so we will write down the equation for the parabola so uh, this gives you um, well this is plain algebra going from the geometry um, the parabola is because the sweep line is horizontal uh, the parabola will actually be such that uh, the y square actually drops out uh, so we have y equals uh, an x square um, uh, x term and then we also have a constant uh, so the uh, calculations here uh, they are done with letters but they can be very done so they're directly generalizing how you would do this with numbers expressing the fact that for any point q with coordinates x and y it lies at the same distance of the side pi the pi has coordinates pi x and pi y okay so we have now the equation so what uh, what do we do with this well we compute the intersection point um, so what do we find uh, with the intersection point well we arrive at our contradiction so note that uh, we have uh, a quadratic equation in x now uh, because we, we compute the intersection with any y but actually we have two solutions for x and here we have the property that the beach line consists of all the points closest to the sweep line so it's x monotone as we have reasoned uh, in the solution of exercise 2 so we have our con contradiction now so the first type of um, case when we break the beach line with a parabola that comes in in the middle of a parabola that cannot happen okay so here is now the second case so we have a new uh, parabolic arc in between two arcs and this is an important um, case um, so um, so if a new arc actually appears between two arcs what can we do um, well um, between two uh, parabolas then actually what we have uh, we have what they call a largest non-empty circle and what they call i mean what the book calls and what we call in this course uh, remember the characterization of a vertex of a voronoi diagram 
So when we have this new arc appearing, then actually we do have a vertex of a Voronoi diagram. Okay, um, so as actually the sweep line comes down, um, if we actually keep uh, this uh, circle tangent, then actually at some point we will not have uh, a largest non-empty circle anymore because the site event points will become inside this largest uh, circle. But actually, this is something that uh, cannot happen by the definition of this uh, largest non-empty circle. So that is under the assumption that we have this point Q appearing without, uh, we, we have this new parabola appearing without any new site. So actually, that cannot happen. So we arrived also for a contradiction for the second case. Okay, uh, we are more than halfway in this lecture. I hope that you are still following this. Um, so the beach line is an important concept. Uh, we could, so that would be another uh, interesting programming exercise, make an animation even of this beach line, but that it's a, a very nice visualization. So the algorithm is essentially there. Um, so I gave the equations for the parabolas. Um, and for an example, you could uh, plot all the parabolas that are occurring for any given event, for any uh, given sweep line that goes through the uh, sites. All right, uh, I was distracted a little bit, so let me summarize uh, the lemma that we have just proven. So we have two types of event, a parabola appears or a parabola disappears. Uh, a parabola appears only through a side event. That's important. Okay, um, because there are endpoints, we can have at most n minus one splits after the first site. So you could have that the original parabola would be split at n minus one times. Uh, and actually, I forgot to list this, but now I'm thinking that this could be another interesting exercise. Actually, we've seen this already with three sites. Uh, this example where you have two n minus one. So where the original parabola is splitted, uh, so I can probably go back again. Uh, so here you have this already. We have three sides, so ignore the fourth point. Um, well, uh, yeah, so if I, I didn't stretch, stretch it long enough, but you can see if I would stretch this uh, long enough, then you would see, and now I should use the color black. Um, so what we have here is that we would still have here another part. But you see, you could extend this picture for one, two, three, four, five, for three sides. So this is where you have the 2n minus 1. And that's the worst case that can happen. So this is the worst case that can happen here. Uh, the 2n minus 1, I just showed that this bound is sharp for already three sides. Okay, um, circle events. So when do parabolas disappear? Uh, well, we already introduced it a little bit in the proof of the lemma. So this is why it was so important to go through the proof. So even if we are computer scientists not interested in mathematical proofs, um, I hope that through this reasoning, you start to understand that proofs gives you a lot of insight. So here um, is a situation where the B beta one, the first parabola disappears. And this can only happen at a circle event. 
So at that point, uh, we have three parabolas intersecting each other. There are three sides involved. And because of the definition of this parabola here, you are at the same distance of the focus than you are of the sweep line. So we have three sites, uh, three points that are the foci of these three parabolas, and they are at the same distance. There is no other, so these are adjacent parabolas, there are no uh, other sites involved. So this Q is the center of the largest non-empty circle that contains in its interior no other site. And that again is a vertex. Uh, remember the characterization of the vertices of the Voronoi diagrams. Okay, what we just proved is that the only way in which an arc can disappear from the beach line is through a circle event. And uh, we have two types of events. We have side events and circle events. Okay, uh, we are getting closer. And we are getting to the realization of the point where we can describe the algorithm. So what will we use? Uh, so we have the doubly connected edge list uh, that stores the Voronoi diagram. Um, in mathematics, we can work with points at infinity, but in practice, we actually work with a bounding box. When we sort the points, we have the upper and the lower uh, bound, but we can also look at uh, the left and the right to get uh, the bounding box. Now, how do we represent the beach line? Um, well, we represent the beach line by a balanced binary search tree. Um, so a little bit similar to what we considered earlier uh, when we applied the sweep line algorithm uh, for the line segment intersection. So it's important somehow that we can uh, work with the adjacency. Um, I mentioned the power priority queue earlier to store all our sites. Uh, the priority queue will also be used for the circle events. Um, so we can initialize the priority queue with our site events, but circle events are not known in advance. So exercise three can be done with Seagull. Uh, but you can also do this by hand. So just, just there are five points. Uh, construct a bounding box um, and draw the doubly connected edge list. Um, also describe. Uh, so with describing, I mean uh, list all vertex records, list all face records, lists all edge records. Okay, that was another pause again with the exercise. Um, so now we have to, um, one more thing that we need to uh, prove before we get to the formulation of the algorithm. So we have our circle events and we have to make sure that uh, every Voronoi vertex is actually detected by a circle event. Okay. Uh, how do we detect uh, circle events? Um, so we have these disappearing arcs. Um, so for every for every vertex, uh, there will be a circle. Um, so if we consider the neighbors of the disappearing arc, then there are three sites involved. And uh, by just three points uniquely define a circle. Um, in a previous lecture, actually, I gave the algorithm. So if you use the bisector construction, you can actually construct the center of this circle. Um, and that 
circle event happens when the lowest point of that uh, circle touches the sweep line. So actually for every, so you keep the adjacencies, so you can actually keep track. Uh, so here I'm still thinking of a mathematical formulation. You can actually not only see these beach lines, but you can also see the circles. So you keep track of the circles through three adjacent sites. So, and uh, the point at when you have a circle event, uh, that's actually now characterized. So this was also in the proof of our previous uh, lemma. So what's the point now again of this, this lemma that we are trying to prove here, that every Vor Voronoi die vertex is detected by a circle event. So, and uh, the way we detect this is by uh, keeping track of when the lowest point of such circle actually touches the sweep line. So if we have three points, so as soon as actually we insert a new point, we encounter a new point, we can detect where it is in the adjacent point. So we use the X coordinates for that. And this, this balanced binary search tree and we compute uh, the circle. And that will give us the event point as well. Okay. So at that event point, uh, when we have the touching, that means that we can remove uh, from the adjacencies. So the adjacencies will then also change. Um, so points then will become uh, if we have to update our uh, search tree um, as well. Okay, so now actually the programmer comes awaken us. So we know enough, so we have enough insight to formulate the algorithm in a top-down fashion. So we have our points sorted, the sites, they are sorted along their height. We initialize the event queue with these points sorted. Uh, we have an empty balanced binary search tree, also an empty Voronoi diagram. Although you could think that the bounding box should already be there. So we um, pop every next event and we distinguish between circle events and sites events. Um, so at a site event, um, we have uh, a site, so that's the event. For a circle event, uh, we have a leaf of the balanced binary search tree. Okay, so this is the uh, main algorithm that needs two subroutines defined. So here is the handling of a site event. Uh, if this is uh, the first site that we encounter, then we just insert, there's nothing there. So you can see that the balanced binary search tree consists just of this point. Um, the balanced binary search tree will store the adjacency. Uh, depending of a point is at the left or the right of this point, we will insert it to the left or the right child. So um, if the balanced binary search tree is not empty, then we have to insert this and we have to um, take care of the circle events. Um, so, so we have to adjust uh, the beach line essentially. Um, so we have a new point when we um, insert this in the um, balanced binary search tree, we eventually have to rebalance the tree. Um, uh, we may also encounter, uh, so when we have a new arc coming in, it could very well that this leads to a circle event. And that event leads to a vertex. Um, 
So whenever we have a new um, vertex or we have a new uh, site, we actually have new bisectors. So we have new half edge uh, record. So we need to update this. So then we have the circle event. So we have the adjacency. Uh, so for every triples that involve the new site, we add the circle events. Okay, let me now explain how we handle circle events. Um, so this is a high level algorithm. So uh, again, one would actually need to look back uh, to the data structures that all the operations that are here in these statements uh, three to nine, that they are actually primitives. Uh, so that this can be done all in uh, constant time or in time that is uh, logarithmic in the height of the uh, balanced binary search tree. Because we have already one loop in uh, the main algorithm. So perhaps I should scroll back here. So we this loop will actually run over all the events. So we have the original sites. And we also have the vertexes, which are the circle events. So in some sense, rushing ahead to the n log n, uh, you can kind of see that the complexity of the Voronoi diagrams, the fact that we have a linear number of uh, vertices, there's also a linear number of circle events, that that will lead to uh, that we execute this loop while not more than a number of times that is linear in the number of sites. Okay, I'm running ahead. All right, um, that's also to motivate why we are looking at uh, the algorithm here. So this is a very high level algorithm, um, although it is very good. And if this would be a true programming course, you would need to brush up uh, your um, data structures certainly if you would implement this from scratch, but we are using Seagull here. Um, and Seagull provides us actually with all the primitives. Um, so we will update uh, the uh, search tree. So if we have a circle event, that means that there is an arc that disappears from the beach line. Uh, the beach line is actually now stored just by the a tree that stores the adjacency for the points. Um, so we have the breakpoints at the internal nodes. Uh, we delete also the circle events. Okay, then we update the doubly connected edge list with new vertex records. With we have a new vertex which is the center of this largest non-empty um, circle. So we have new edge records and uh, we will also have the pointer connection. So if we have a circle event, then actually we have to update the uh, queue for new uh, circle events. So when an arc disappears, the adjacency information changes and uh, we will create therefore new triplets and new circle events. Okay, it looks like a complicated bookkeeping, uh, but computers are good at this. Um, so, and this lends itself very good to a structured algorithm. Okay, so my last slide. Um, so this algorithm is actually known Fortune's algorithm. So it was described in 1986 and named after its um, inventor. So this is an optimal n log n algorithm. Um, so the suggested activities is that you, if you haven't already done this, in the end of this recording, uh, written down the solutions or for the exercises or sketch the solutions at the exercises. You can do them all by hand or most of them, um, but using the code is indeed uh, recommended. So the purpose of uh, this 
course is that you get familiar with the textbook so i followed closely section 7.2 the second section in the seventh chapter for graduate students looking at this uh, course uh, there is the paper um, and in some sense for graduate students you have the purpose of these courses is that you get access and familiarity with the literature okay i'm running over time in the next lecture we will address the cost of this algorithm